Evening everyone, hope you're all well. Nice to see everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Bill Betts. <laughs> so who am I? So um, I started Kent Police in 2003, uh, December 2003, and I left again in probably March 2004. <laughs> I'd actually resigned already. Um, I'd uh, done my 10 weeks tutorship, I'd done the, the Ashford thing, I'd done the, the, the tutorship and been out in the streets, completely stressed out, didn't recognise it and uh, resigned and then just thought, shit, I've made a mistake here, you know, so I went back into the police for my sins and then carried on with my career for a little bit. So I went into a, a, a sleepy town of Tunbridge Wells, as they all say, the Royal, Royal Borough of Tunbridge Wells and then joined the exciting world of um, sitting in a car with guns. Uh, so I joined ARVs in 2008, we're um, in Kent, quite a busy, busy area, lots of um, sort of venue work, so it was quite boring. Um, added to my skills as a medic and then became um, an operational firearms commander. So um, there might be a few of you that sort of think, ugh, ugh, you know. And I, I said to Alex once, you know, when, when you're on um, like a specialist unit and you walk into a police station, everyone buries their head in the... In, into the computer because no one wants to talk to you, no one wants the work given to them because that's what, that's what you're doing. But when you come in here tonight, you know, even if with cops or non-cops, everyone wants to say hello, everyone wants to speak to you. And I said to Alex, that's the difference between the police service and business, you know, everyone wants to sort of, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> uh, they do shit handovers either, is that what you said? <laughs> But everyone, everyone wants to say like hello to you, and I, I picked up on that with the shift to success, shift to success community. Um, you know, everyone was really, really friendly. Everyone wants to know who you are. You know, you jump on the accountability buddies, and you're getting to know each other, and made some really, really good buddies through that. And that's really actually the accountability buddies have also helped me to accelerate my business. So um, we'll talk about that later. Um, so. I was sitting in a, um, I had a few mental health issues through the police. Um, I was a shit magnet when it came to being a medic. Um, probably dealt with a, quite a lot of trauma. Even saw a paramedic run away from some trauma that I, we were dealing with. You know, I was doing more work than the paramedic was. He just spent ages going in and out getting equipment. Um, and I turned around to the job and just said, look, no more. I can't go out. Um, I don't want to go out anymore. And then they're like, well, what do we do with you now? Now what do we do with you? You know, spent a lot of money on me in my training. So they put me in a garage, um, shredding confidential paperwork. And one day my phone rang after filling in a shift to success uh, questionnaire. Now, this is why I kind of sometimes think it's fate because I never answer my phone to like those kind of numbers, you know, and I did. And I can't remember the lady's name, um, but I had a chat with her and Alex was doing um, business startup days or I um, can't remember what they're called now. Sorry? Quick start, Quick start days. And she was like, um, it's, uh, this was Friday. And she said, oh, we've got a quick start day on Monday. Brilliant, that's my rest day. <laughs> so I said, turn around to Emma, my wife, and um, said, well, we're off to, I'm off to Birmingham on Monday to go and uh, find out about this company. And uh, that's where the journey started. Went to the um, quick start day. Now, Emma, my wife there, she couldn't make it tonight, um, already run a business. So she's been, she'd been running a business for 15 years as a pet groomer. And we'd always thought we could do better as a business. And we'd always sought mentorship. We'd always spoken to mentors. And they said, you know, get more customers, put your prices up. But that was like how. They always gave us the, you know, the why or whatever, but not the how. Um, so when I came home and showed Emma the information, the different mentors, the fact that one of the mentors was our customers, I'm, I'm going to us, you know, I'd gone all the way to Birmingham. I came home and I spoke to him and I said, there was this crazy Aussie guy. Um, he loves his spaniel and he gets, he's obsessed about getting his spaniel's feet trimmed. And then I was like, oh, um, was his spaniel named Hol um, Honey? I was like, yeah, I think so. He was like, oh, it's Mr. Priest, isn't it? We, we do his spaniel. <laughs> he, he literally lives up the road from our, uh, from our shop. So... You know, again, maybe fate, small world and all, all, and all that. So um, we joined Shift to Success um, with the mindset of getting uh, A to Z animal care, our primary business, Emma's business and our business, um, doing a bit more work. So um, 
that started to, to work. We started to get successful. We went in, straight into lockdown, didn't we? <laughs> so the whole model got uh, turned upside down, but that worked brilliantly for us because we didn't have to worry about childcare. So we went online, we shifted success and uh, we came out of lockdown. Um, so Dog Groom has had a, an official lockdown where you, you couldn't open your shop. And then whilst other people were told to stay indoors, we could actually open. So we went, went out of our sort of dog grooming lockdown, as it were, and we put our prices up by 19%. And Shift Success sort of showed us to start looking at our efficiencies and our model. And uh, we had two groomers in the shop um, doing all the backlog and they were doing like 800 pounds a day. And we had two groomers on furlough and we thought, it's not gonna work, is it? They're not gonna do 1600 pounds a day. They just weren't, it just doesn't work like that. So again, using the Shift Success community and recommendations, um, we got help and support from HR and then um, made the two groomers redundant. So straight away, profit profitability <laughs> went up. So that was brilliant. So um, I'm still shredding new papers in the garage. The, the business is doing well. And I thought, I know what I could do. I could do uh, like a business bolt on. Emma could come and, um, and do training for veterinary nurses, like a conversion into veterinary nursing work to dog groomers. And I'd uh, be a business coach for, the, for them. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, a member of staff became pregnant. So Emma was like, right, back to square one, can't do that. So I'm thinking, where do I do then? What do I do? So having been in, um, we joined March 2021, December time this was, um, having been in the, in the program and going through the modules, I thought, you know, it's really lit up a bulb. And people could see in me, we're talking about the police, I was a bit like, ugh. Talking about business, just completely lit up and knew like, People were saying to me, you know, you, you look like you're really sort of interested in what you're, what you're talking about. So talking, the business sort of lit a light bulb in me. I wanted to, uh, I came alive. I was really frustrated um, with the, the way the police were treating me. They were telling me that I had to go and find myself a job. And when you're in the police and you go and um, speak to another department and say, hi, I'm, I'm taser trained. Um, I can do this and do that. They just think well, why are you coming to me? Are they trying to get rid of you? We don't want you. And I actually had sergeants tell me that. They thought I was like, they were just trying to get rid of me out of the department sort of thing. So very frustrated, very frustrated with pay and the pensions. And I think frustration is just like the biggest word for me um, with the direction of the police. Um, so December um, the 28th, 2021, I suddenly got, I, I think I, I thought about it in bed. I was like, I can't do um, business training for the, for the people that we're going to train to be dog groomers, so why don't I do it for the wider community? So um, sat there on my phone, started a Facebook group, started a Facebook page, uh, started an Instagram account, you know, imperfect action beats perfect, imperfect inaction, inaction yeah. <laughs> started all those three, um, plagiarized my wife's logo. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> But it works, doesn't it? You know, I couldn't, I'm not a, a very creative person like that. So plagiarised my wife's logo, um, did have a different name then, and just got out there. Went into Instagram, went into a famous dog groomer, um, went into his friends, and just started following. You know, I did about 10 minutes a day, following, following, following. And every time I got someone following me back, hi, I've got a Facebook group. Um, I wondered if you'd like to join it and um, come, and, come and see what we do. And that's where it started. So, oh, this, I, I get confused about my dates and when COVID's messed me up a bit. Started December 2000, it might be de December 21, mightn't it? Um, so yeah, so now um, Pet Passion to Profit was born in that December. Um, the Facebook group there started in that December and we've just tipped over 10,000 members for that Facebook group. <laughs> YouTube channel. Um, probably 55 episodes on the YouTube channel because channel, they're all uh, repurposed podcasts. But as you can see, you've got 395 subscribers and then uh, 18,000 listens on my, on my podcast with 55 episodes on there. So, and that is global as well. People all over the world are listening to that podcast. So I started the Facebook group and again, my very first client came from a Shift to Success member they, um, they were hanging out in a business group in January and uh, they saw someone say, 
I'm a dog groomer. Does anyone know business mentors for dog groomers? So she tagged me in it. And uh, I had like an out of body experience. I picked up my phone and just phoned this lady and said, hi, can I help you? Sort of thing. Yeah, and I, <laughs> it's like Lorna's, yeah, speak on the phone, people. <laughs> um, and she said, yes. And then she's like, how much? And I pulled a figure out of the air, two and a half thousand pounds. She was like, yes. So we did six months worth of tutor, like mentorship and I got some really good results from her, for her. So um, again, like that starts to build that confidence up. And then again, I said yes to do another uh, online um, speaking gig. Um, there's a theme here, always say yes to everything. Uh, and I just, every, all the other businesses have taken my, what I want to talk about, pricing, um, advertising. So all I did was tell the story, pretty much what I'm telling you tonight, really. And there was so, my phone was ringing whilst I was still on the Zoom call telling the story. People were messaging me going, this is, this is us, this is what we're doing, this is what we're going through. And then that was pretty much where, um, where we started to think, yeah, it's gonna start taking off. So doing my one-to-one -one mentorship, I started to get more and more clients, uh, still in the police. So December, I launched my group and my business. And then March, I resigned from the police. So I resigned from the police. My last day, and I don't know if anyone else who goes through this, my last day, I turned up an hour late, put some donuts on the desk. The office was empty. I sat at my desk for an hour. The sergeant was kicking about. I said, um, can I go home? And he went, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so after 19 years, I went to Tesco's, did my shop, and, uh, and that was it. You know, and that is that kind of does unfortunately sum up um, some of the police family for us, doesn't it? But it wasn't. Um, and I, although running up to that res resignation, I did have some conversations with Alex and conversations with other members of the community. Emma was very supportive, but I knew because I had this community behind me that I'd be picked up if I if I was ever to fall down. You know, and it, yeah. Alex said I could rejoin the police. I was like, no. <laughs> there is always that, isn't it? They're always desperate for people, but no. Um, so yeah, so resigned from the police and it didn't feel like a big jump. It didn't feel like a leap. You know, like people might say to you, it was just a, a, a step across, you know, and um, off we go, we're flying. So first year, um, turnover of 71,684. <laughs> a nice bit of profit in there as well. And then two months later after that, I registered at VAT for obviously 85,000. Um, podcast has been nominated for an industry award. And I, you know, I've, I've got to say the pet grooming industry is quite a close knit industry. And when I go up for, should I be awarded that award, I will be thanking the industry for sort of accepting me and allowing me to come in because um, they've really sort of taken to, to liking me, which has been quite helpful with my business. Um, personal network has grown, allowing me to work with new people. Um, but what I would say um, is definitely, if you're looking to work with people, come into the Shift to Success community because there's so many skill sets in here, but also they're, they're coming from the same place as you. They've got the same mindset as you. They've got the same training as you because they're going through the same program. You know, so I've got a, a virtual assistant, as in Emma Holbert is in the community, but she's also like an accountability buddy for me because we sometimes sit on the phone, discuss what's happening, and she can also help me and I can help her with ideas. So use the community within. It definitely works a lot better. And I've got clients all over the world, so don't be afraid to jump on Zoom with people. I've got a client in New Zealand, client in um, Texas, Isle of Man. I'll, I'll class that as all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> How's life changed? So um, I remember um, we moved house and um, I thought that would be like, the, that would be the change. That would be like, make everything better. But all it was was a distraction. So within a few months of moving house, although it was a good move, um, I realized that, you know, I was still suffering. I was still, still the same issues. So, and um, Emma actually turned around to me one day and just said, 
you know, you need to go and get some help. So at that time, I'd never been to a doctor so much whilst in the final sort of year, year six months in the police. But now, um, you know, mental health is so much better, so much better, so much more positive. Uh, they used to call me Eeyore at, at work, you know. Um, I was that copper around the briefing table going, oh, bloody pay, pensions, uh, in control room inspectors are absolutely appalling. They're going to get us killed, blah, blah, blah. You know, and everyone would be like, oh, no, it's Eeyore again. <laughs> you, know, you know, I just don't reckon, and even my mum said that. I remember driving home from dropping the kids off. And my mum was on the phone. She said, I don't recognise you anymore. I don't know where this new person has come from. Um, so the mental health uh, is a lot better. Thank you. Getting more time at home, obviously. Um, summer holidays. Summer holidays this year. Not stressful at all. You know, they, they seem to creep up on parents. And it's like yesterday we worked out when half term was in October. It was like, fuck. But you haven't got that stress anymore. And we, I don't think I understood how stressed, trapped, and sort of um, claustrophobic I was until I left the police. I didn't understand that until I left as to how much control they have over your life, um, especially if you're on a team with lots of, uh, lots of children and stuff like that. So battling for summer holidays didn't happen. My kids just played out, they go out on their bikes, um, don't see them for days, it's great. Um, <laughs> so we didn't need to farm those kids out, although I did send them out to France for 10 days. But Again, I had the opportunity to drive them out and come back. Um, we've got the opportunity to be here tonight as well. You know, many of um, our friends in, from Shift Success that can't be here because of commitments and stuff. So um, it's a lot more freedom, isn't it? I'm more creative. I never thought of myself as a creative person, um, but I come up with some like great stuff, I think. <laughs> you know, I never thought, I, I, I hear myself talking to people on Zoom going, you could do this, you could do that. And it's like, boom. Um, so I'm more creative, so I feel a bit more free in, in my mindset as well. Um, and I'm rewarded for my hard work financially, but and also satisfaction as well with working with clients, um, which is awesome. So top tips, Lorna will like this one, talk to people. You know, and if you, if you look back over the Shift Success Facebook group, there's a picture of me with a microphone on, um, because I never used to like talking to people on the phone, hated it. I've just spent the last few day, few weeks um, doing the, the spear, the, the audition call on the phone. Um, so I've been speaking to loads of people. Um, and it does help, doesn't it? Talk to people, network. Even if it's not clients, you know, if someone messages you just to find out what you do or ask your advice, talk to them. You just never know where it's going to be going. Um, ask for help from anyone in the community around you. And I think everyone, most people have said here, like being vulnerable you won't start to learn until you're vulnerable and um, it's okay to be vulnerable when you're asking for help. Turn up to your accountability sessions, make sure you talk to your accountability buddy. Even if you're helping them, you're helping yourself because you're giving yourself ideas at the same time. Don't complete, collaborate. That was a good one I, I've learning to do. You know, there's other people that do the same as me. There's a lady in America that does the same as me. So I just, you know, social media, messaged her, would you like a fancy a Zoom call? Yeah, she's going to come and do a guest spot on my programme. You know, and my colleague, my, my clients might learn something else from her. So don't compete, collaborate. The more vulnerable you are, and um, be, beware who you discuss business with. Now, um, John Dean, some of you all know, is in the Shift to Success community. He was my um, sergeant on firearms, and we'd spend night shifts after night shifts talking business. Uh, and I'd be like, go on, leave, go on, go and set up your plumbing business. And he'd be like, go on, leave, go and do your dog grooming stuff. And we'd be like, I don't know how. Um, but there'd be other times where I'd be sitting in a car with people who I definitely wouldn't talk business with because they're very uh, insular, negative, brainwashed um, at times. Um, the same with family, unfortunately, and friends. So always talk to people who are positive and have got a similar mindsets to you as well. Um, and that's me. Little bets, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.